Hello, hello, hello. This is Chris and Rick Talk Guitars. That's Chris over there. Hello. And I'm Rick. And uh, today we're going to talk about favorite pedals. Oh, boy. Yours, mine, whoever's Everybody's. favorite pedals. Who doesn't love pedals? I know. Some They're, people. Well, yeah. Some people hate pedals. We'll talk about that, too. But um, Chris and I like pedals. I like pedals. What's your favorite pedal? My favorite pedal, it's kind of hard to say because I have different types of favorite pedals. And I should start this off by saying... I go through long periods of where I don't give a shit about a pedal. I don't want a pedal. I want anything between my guitar and my amp. Uh-huh. But realistically, if I'm doing a lot of playing, um, I have to have like a couple of pedals. And one of the pedals is a Tube Screamer, which I guess you could say that makes it, must make it one of my favorite pedals. Uh-huh. And if someone gave me 20 Tube Screamers, I'd be happy. <laughs> but a Tube Screamer isn't that much fun. A phase shifter is much funner. Oh, yeah. I've had a few of those. So uh-huh. um, phase shifters are one of my favorite pedals, I should say. Cool. And I don't, and it's, it's kind of ironic because I never use them for anything <laughs> like live or for recording. That's pretty funny. But I like them. I like, I don't know. It's interesting. Weird. It is interesting, isn't it? Fascinating. I, <laughs> fascinating. I think so. The fact that you dig the pedals and monkeying around with them, but don't really find a use for them within your material or. I find them used them all the time around yeah. the house. Yeah. And in recordings. I've used them in recordings. You, oh, okay. Cool. I mean, I like the organy kind of yeah. effect that they give. And I have a few of them. And uh-huh. I, I think if I were going to become a pedal collector, uh-huh. I think that might be my angle. I might say, I'm going to collect face shifters. Nice. But I'm not a pedal collector, and I don't collect face <laughs> shifters, but I've managed to amass a few of them. Got it. And one of them being the Holy Grail. I see you're looking at that. Rick is looking at my Holy Grail phase shifter right now, which is the... Oh, I um, love that thing. It's the... What is it? The Maestro the, PS1A. It's so cool. That's the Alex Lifeson phaser it, that a good friend of mine got for me. It's, it looks like it should be on the set of Mr. Rogers, doesn't it? Like... It should be, it should be everywhere. It it's be, so freaking awesome. Or on the, the bridge of... Of the Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. <laughs> No, that is a cool phaser, and it sounds amazing, and I love the way it looks. It's like it's as big as four pedals combined, but it's awesome. Yeah. I love uh, it. It's my favorite. I think it is my favorite okay. pedal of okay. all my pedals that I have. Now, okay. what's your favorite pedal? Of the ones I have, I'd have to say, um, you know what? I- I'm partial to this old Boss D. Uh, Digital delay. It's those a DD two. Cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I like those. And because bef- when I was looking for a delay, I wanted something that would give me more milliseconds than just a you know your standard analog would back then and stuff. And that d- digital delay did that. And right. it sound and it, at the time it was digital. Quote. I'm using quotes, but it still sounded kind of warm it's and, kind of and analog. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of dug it. Those are collectible. And I still have that damn thing. And I dig that thing. Um, but um, and I'm a sucker for a wah. I just am, you know, mm-hmm. I, uh, and I never overuse them, but for the longest time, that was like a mainstay. I always had a wah if I did have a board. I Like you, I go through phases where it's like, yeah, I just, I just want to plug in. It's just, I don't want to do any of this other right. crap. Right. But then there's other times, depending on what I'm doing, where I have a whatever size board. And, and for the a wah, let's talk about the wah for a moment, because cool. that's another effect that I really like. Yeah. And I've never had, I never had one for years and years and years, and uh-huh. probably... Maybe five or six years ago, I uh-huh. said, I need to get a wah. Uh-huh. And so I got one, just a Dunlop Crybaby from the 80s, I think. And I, I played on it around the house. And this is kind of fun. And then I kind of like went down a wah rabbit hole. <laughs> and I ended up with a Thomas Organ, nice. a like late 70s Thomas Organ. with a, It's got a stack of dimes inductor, which is like nerd speak for one of the desirable inductors that kind of give the wah its voice. And I fucking love that yeah. thing. It's never been live. I don't really use it, but um, I, I dig it out a lot, and I have a lot of fun with it. And I like the wah for doing, like, the, the cocked wah, yeah. just getting kind of, like, nasally sounds and different, you know, textures and vocally sounds, and not so much for the chunk of chunk of porn. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, no, wah is one of my favorite. I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have a favorite pedal, because every time we talk about one, I'm going to go, yeah, oh, exactly, that's my favorite pedal. Exactly. So, and I can see you using it that way, more texturally than the wacka wacka. Oh yeah, I brought it to a I brought it to a riff brokers practice. That's cool. A while back, and I just tried it in the context of several songs. And if it was on my live board, there's at least two or three songs in the set that we're doing now where I would use it. I would nice. just like cock it to a certain point, and it just kind of punches out this nasally, like you know, almost Mick Ronson-y kind there of you like go. tone. And so it would definitely be usable, but I'm not going to stick it on my board. 
Yeah. Um, because it just opens up a whole new can of worms. Of, <laughs> you need like the wah pedal suffers. It's a vintage one, so it suffers from that, you know, that tone suck, they Got call it. it. It's not bad at all if you put it after the tuner uh-huh. with a buffer in the tuner. So it would have to go, it would have to move a bunch of pedals out and do all this other bullshit. So I'm not going to do that. I mean, I I'm just going to enjoy it around the house. Yeah. Just leave it on its own and exactly. have fun with it. So how many pedals do you have on your current board right oh, now gosh. as we speak? I probably got close to 10. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's insane. And that's not that's actually not a lot for if you like look on right, right. look at right. some people's but for pedal me, boards. Yeah, because I'm doing some U2 tribute thing where I'm trying to be the edge and so right. I've got all these things on that I ne- normally would never You're going to need a rack mount too. I'm going to need a rack so mount. So let's see, I just <laughs> added one pedal to my board. Which it, which required me to add two because I had one of them. It's in a right. true bypass loop, so there's a got bypass it. loop. So how many's on there right now? You've got eight on there. I've got eight. Okay, yeah. and one of them's just a loop pedal. Oh, got it. And um, that's my practice board. There's three on that one, and my practice or not my practice, I should say for rehearsals because it fits uh-huh. in a backpack. Okay, and that's just a tube screamer, a delay, and um, a, a boost on the end, which I'll swap out sometimes with a reverb pedal. But um, yeah, I. Go back and forth, like I said. You know, right now, the last few weeks, I've kind of been into pedals. So I've been, like, spending a lot of time dorking around online looking at them. So how many vintage pedals do you have, would you uh, say? I've got only a couple. Like, I've got that digital delay. I've got that chorus that you borrowed, say, which yeah, is yeah. cool. Um, I think I might have a couple others, but I can't remember them offhand. Oh, yeah, but... you have a blue um, CS2, oh, yeah. the Boss. Yep. yep. The Boss Compressor, yeah. Which that's a good cool pedal. Too. I like that. That's been on my board. That's oh, and a Dynacomp, too. Okay. Yeah. I have that one, too. Yeah. So, you, yeah. Those are good vintage pedals. And I like both the Dynacomp and the yeah. the Boss CS2. The CS2 is really great for Telecasters. And that, cool. whenever I'm playing my Tele, that's, I always have that on. Very cool. Because it does great things with that Tele's bridge pickup. But... And yeah, the thing I love about those Boss pedals, those old ones, is they were built to last, for God's sake. That, those pedals are 30 years old. Right. Easy. And they they work, they, they function properly, and they're, they're fine. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with them at all. I like them. I like, you know, the ones that I like, I like a lot. There's a lot of Boss. They made a shit ton of pedals. I know. And there's some of them that, know. you know, I don't really care about. Right. But I, I think that's funny that there's a lot of people that just hate them. They're like a, a yeah, it's ridiculous. Why would you play a Boss pedal when you can... Have a boutique pedal. It's like because they they sound they, great and they last forever. Well, they, some of them Hello. they may do sound really good. I love that. I have one of the what is that DM two delay. Oh yeah, yeah. that that pedal sounds great. Yeah. it's like one of the best non tape tape sounding echoes I've ever heard. They did it right, man. And I think I think most of their pedals sound fine. They sound great. I mean, yeah, yeah. And a lot of the boutique pedals, like we talk about, are are either they stole a circuit from somebody or. Or they, you know, they use components that are cheap that, that give out and they break and, yeah. you know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm glad that the industry exists because, uh, as I've said before, sure. it makes, right, you know, right. vintage panels are, are extremely reasonable. Except for, you know, there's a few that are really collectible yeah. that, you know, get pricey. But if you want just want a good sounding pedal for like you know kind of to, to collect like if you wanted to collect like MXR or old DOD like the first run DODs that's true I mean I've gotten those for you know not a whole lot of money and they're super cool yeah. I mean I may not even use them all the time but I mean for recording or sometimes you yeah. just want something to inspire you to come up with a part yep. I mean you compare you know you could get three vintage you know like DODs for the price of like one boutique pedal that you know I don't know. I'm not down on boutique. No. I just the I, the way I get down on boutique pedals is that I think a, there's a lot of like bullshit marketing that goes with them. That it, as long as people are being rational, yeah, I don't think it's a problem. But I think sometimes they tend to perpetuate like myths that keep them in you know in the pedal industry, right? right. Like yeah. making money, which is kind of like kind of a shitty thing, I think. There's some really cool people in there. We yeah. talked about that dude, um, JHS Pedals. I love that dude. I, I love, dig that guy too. I love too. his vibe. I love his yeah. take. He's very knowledgeable. And he's like totally no bullshit. You know, yeah. it's not like... Exactly. He's not a pedal woo peddler. He's like, this is what it is. He has like... He had a great episode talking about Behringer pedals. And like, and he, his whole point was like, you know, if you've always wanted to try this really expensive pedal here, 
get this. You can get it for 10 bucks, That's and it'll cool. give you the, the sound yeah. of that pedal so you can check That's it out. That's so cool. And, I mean, he doesn't push his pedals. Yeah. So that dude is that dude is great. And I think you're right. I mean, the only time I really kind of my hackles get up is when people start to bad mouth like perfect like boss pedals for instance or, or these pedals that we've come to use yeah. and they're then they're mainstays in people's boards and it's like no i've cracked the code and this this is an improvement on that or this is a better pedal or whatever and it's like well these pedals have stood the test of time and people are using them and right. it's fine you may and have you know your pedals probably it's cool and people dig it you have a, an audience for your stuff that's cool but you don't need to like bad mouth all this other stuff anyway but yeah so i think yeah I agree. No. And, and, and go ahead. Sorry. No, in the end, they're, and they're just pedals. Yeah. I mean, what is coming out of your amp? Do you suck? I mean, a, pedal, a pedal's not going to save you. Well, that's a whole other that, issue. And, that, and that's one thing that I find interesting because I've run across this over the years as people who, who um, and this happened a lot, like in the in the eighties, in the seventies. It was uh-huh. like guitar players would say, "I'm not into pedals. I think they're a crutch. People use them for." Um, to you know, to hide their bad playing, I, they don't do. I don't know of any pedal that hides right, bad playing. Right. It might I mean, have, actually yeah, it you, might enhance. You, you have the... like a doubled bad playing <laughs> right, right. because you have a delay <laughs> on there or something. I don't think it really. I mean, it's in the end, it's like what garbage in, garbage out, right. or, or whatever. So they're yeah. just they're fun. I yeah. think I, I don't think, think there's any harm in them. They're fun, and they get you to interact with your gear more, and you can learn about like you know, if I move this pedal over here. It sounds better. Yeah. Why does that sound better? And you learn about buffers That's and all this crazy. other shit. But I just, I just have a low threshold for pedal woo or you know marketing bullshit. Yeah. I don't. I think there's been like a lot of fucking shit done. I've talked about this before, and I'm mm-hmm. sure people are getting sick of it. But <laughs> I don't think an Ibanez fucking tube screamer needs a hole drilled in it with a switch on it because the chances are the amount of badness that that stock pedal uh-huh. is doing to your sound is not worth what you just did right. to that pedal. Right. I mean, focus elsewhere if you're having if you, if you sound like shit, focus elsewhere because it's not going to be that, I can guarantee it. I mean, I love it. And there, and that's what goes back to that thing. There were people that promoted that, that yeah, did that, that performed that service. They promoted that and they even when science came out and said, "You know what? True bypass isn't the ban- the end all be all. Yeah. There's other things at work here." And the whole guitar playing community is is getting on board now and people yeah. know they have armed themselves with knowledge and some people are still like happy to kind of well you know why don't you get me that pedal and you know I'll put a true bypass on there for you you know in 50 bucks and you'll have a better pedal uh-huh. you won't have a better pedal no, you'll have I a agree. worse pedal yeah. but I don't know it's just my opinion but it, it's it's not just pedals or guitar or anything it's like I don't like I like rational yeah. thinking but I have to temper that with being a guitar player and being somewhat superstitious, yeah. I like the old stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, right, right. I like, you know, I open up an old pedal and see like these carbon co- composite resistors and these old caps, right. and I just go, ooh, magic. <laughs> so I get, I get some of this, yeah. But I, I am, I, I do know that these, there might be something about these components that will make it sound different. A lot of times, it's not for the better. Yeah, they'll they'll be out of tolerance and they drift. But I don't know. I, I think you can have fun being superstitious and still arm yourself with knowledge and yeah. not waste any money or wait or, or steer people wrong. Exactly. That's like, I think that's a great way to put it. Another thing for me when it comes to this kind of shit is embrace being wrong. At least if I'm wrong and I can correct myself from that point forward, I can be right. There you go. So, you know, when it comes to pedal woo and all this other shit, I may have in the past like stuck to something and then I found out, wait, you know what? The science is in. It's not really what's going on here. So make an adjustment, and it's cool. That's cool. But uh, we're talking about pedals. <laughs> no vaccinations. Okay. No. Yeah, pedals. Well, there are some people who don't like pedals at all. Right. You know, they just want to go guitar amp, which is totally cool. You know, yeah. I, I dig that because that's like um, because pedals just are just used to cover up bad playing. <laughs> oh, right, 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 right. Um, you know, and these are the people that use the clip-on tuners and. Which is cool. They're cool too, but Another it's just fascinating to me that like there are like you know just stalwarts. Like no, I I'm well, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, kind of on their side because I mean if you can play, I mean I exactly. love the sound of guitar and an amp. Yeah, that's and like, in a way anything between that is a distraction. Yeah, I mean it's so fun to have little distractions. So I'm I mean I love pedals. Yeah, there again you know if you're just gonna be like 
adamant like you can't do anything without you know you're just like ruining things you know how much music has been made with oh, pedals yeah. and without pedals yeah so talk about uh bands that like are pedal centric bands you mentioned you too yeah. without you know take away their pedals and they're going to be totally the foundation band. of their sound yeah yeah and it's all effects and echoes and crazy stuff and he but he uses it to such good effect or like david gilmore like you were saying i mean it's, it's just beautiful stuff like the stuff that he's put on his guitar is just it, it, it's tone and it's yeah, right, dripping right. and it's just really cool. My and, Bloody Valentine, that was a band yeah. from the '90s that um, yeah. there, there were very hugely pedals were a huge part of their yeah. sound and they were very, I mean they did really well. That band did. Um, and then there's people like from and I, I'm, I keep thinking of the '90s now that you know that were so into like one specific pedal that they went out and they collected <laughs> them all. Like Jay Maskus from oh, right. Dinosaur Jr. was like <laughs> the big he was muff. the big muff guy yeah. and he's got like a library. Of, not a lending library, I'd like but to a go library. There, I'd of, like to go there and see that museum. Totally That'd be cool. Have you have you played have you played Big Muffs much? I have over my years, and they're all every time I do, they're just so fun, right? Because they're really fun. You you punch that button and you just get this explosion of fuzz and cool. Yeah, and, I totally see the attraction. And to yeah, and there's a whole like giant <clears throat> rabbit hole for just you take. I'm just going to focus on the Big Muff, and you yeah. can go down for days. There's websites out there. The cool thing about Big Muffs is there was a bunch of different versions of them, uh-huh. and even the same versions will sound different because of the way they were constructed. They're really cool. I happened to, like a few years ago, I had in my possession for a, a time, I had the um, a Ram's Head, which is one of the early Big Muffs, and uh, which I, the one that I have now is a 79 op amp. It has a, it has a different type of um, thing that gives you the uh-huh. distortion. It was transistor, and then there was a, oh, a chip. It operational amplifier and I had like there was a company that made boutique pedals one of the first companies that um, way huge they were called I and I had that. one of their first issue of the swollen pickle which I guess was supposed to be based off a of big muff and it right. was and they were all those are all really collectible pedals and I set them up and listened to them and kind of played with them uh-huh. together and it's really cool and the thing that shocked me was my f- second favorite was the one that I own now was the op amp one. Oh. That it has a distinct sound over the transistor one. The op amp is the one that Billy Corgan from the Smashing oh, Pumpkins right. he made his sound and he probably collected a billion of them. But I was kind of shocked myself at how much I liked that one in, in the context of the Rams head. Right. The Rams head was way more like it's going to be a really annoying word. It was organic. It's oh. the best way to <laughs> explain it. I don't think it that's just, annoying. It just it just responded to the guitar in uh-huh. a way that was like a little bit more real organic right. than the other ones did. They both of the big muffs uh-huh. to me that what struck me because I hadn't played them in years, probably since the seventies, was that um, they're very amp like in the way that they interact with the guitar, and that's mm-hmm. what a lot of fuzz pedals can't get for some reason. Yeah, is they sound like it, and if you're standing over there and I'm playing, you go that sounds the same to me, but you pick up the guitar and play and it's completely different because you're feeling the way it yeah. reacts yeah and the swollen pickle that is very that version is actually really collectible now huh. was it didn't come close to either of those and i don't know if it's maybe it's not the same circuit yeah but the, both of the electro harmonics just like smoked at yeah and i ended up with one of them so that's cool i love the big yeah one. i have played many big muffs over the years and every time it's been they're fun that's a fun pedal because it makes you feel like you've got this crazy weapon and right. it, you know you energize this button and it's just like this big crazy sound and you know it sustains forever and yeah it's it's a blast to turn those things on those are fun pedals to play with oh and there's yeah, and all these those. pedals that we're talking about you know one way to look at it is there's songs in those pedals yeah if you step yep. on the pedal and you you know everything's right you're in the right mood the right frame of mind and you hit the right guitar and the right amp and you're going to get a song out exactly. of it and that's really cool and then it's kind of cool you take the song and you play it in the context with the pedals gone and you have something that you know maybe it's not actually part of the song but per it se inspires. but it brought you to that yep. moment to get that and that's super cool yeah um what's the pedal that I've been oh I got into I love even exploring pedals that are really hard to love, like the chorus pedal. <laughs> yeah. we've, been, we've been talking about those. Right. And that's why I, bar- I borrowed Rick's chorus pedal because I recently got a chorus pedal that I had when I was a kid because I kind of got this thing where I collect shit that I had when I was a kid. But I got a DOD 
a mini chorus from like I think it's from 82 or 81 and um, I had one as a kid it's been gone for years and years and I started dicking around with that and my first thought was like this is this would be a really hard pedal to bust out at a show because everybody would say, start screaming, no, not the 80s. But I found that if you use the chorus pedal with a little tremolo, uh-huh. you can get a really good univibe sound. Sweet. Because the univibe had that liquidy kind of thing yeah. to it. And a phase shifter doesn't by itself, and a tremolo pedal doesn't by itself. But you start to combine That's kind of cool. And, um, yeah, and what I learned from comparing your... Boss CE2 uh-huh. to the DOD mini chorus. They're both cool pedals, but uh-huh. the Boss is like the one you step on. You go, oh my god, really? It's so lush, and it is that sound. That's but cool. it's like it's just like three dimensional and wraps around you. Where the DOD is just a little more. It's almost like a phasery sounding. It's just like kind of more one dimensional. Very usable though. I mean, uh-huh. you just use it in a different way. And yeah, you, and a chorus is so hard to use anyways. Any way you can find. You know, good luck. To it, it is really, but that's cool to know because I haven't played through that pedal in ages. But now I kind of want to do it just do for it, the, just fun. for kicks, yeah. Because um, I used the shit out of that thing in the '80s for sure. That was that was one of my foundational elements to my, my DOD, sound back there. Yeah, it was like, yeah. But and and listening back to those recordings, yeah, I, I can say, God, just, just give it a rest at least for one song. No, just give I it a rest. My DOD. I was playing in a band that was doing. These shows opening before a Holiday Inn band. In, in the, it was called Back Bar Blowout. And nice. there was a bar in the back of the Holiday Inn, and then there was the stage in the front of the Holiday Inn. Like, they were kind of connected, uh-huh. but there was a curtain between them. And what we'd do is we'd play, warm up the crowd, and then the Holiday Inn band would come on and do three sets later that night. That's awesome. And the dude in the opening band came over, the guitar player, and said, Hey, anybody want to buy a chorus pedal? <laughs> and I'm like, how much? And he's like, 20 bucks. And I had 20 bucks. And I'm like, sure. So I bought it. And I'm like, what do you do with this thing? And he goes, you're in a three-piece band. You just step on it, and it makes you sound like there's two guitar players. So I took him at his word, and for probably the next two years, I played with that chorus. Until pedal somebody on. came up and said, hey, <laughs> yeah. dude. Dude, it's, it's 1989. <laughs> it's time to turn it, it off. Oh, that's hilarious. But no. That's funny. He, he, has, he saw you coming, man. And the other thing with being in pedal head uh-huh. is I, I started finding myself wanting to make... Things uh, yeah, and yeah. it started from I have a cupboard full of pedals that have kind of broken over the years, and I kind of throw them in there because they can't be on my live board if they're acting mm-hmm. up. And you know, spring is here, so I'm like, time to get the pedals fixed. So I got out the soldering iron and kind of troubleshot everything and, and got things working. And I'm like, I fixed one of the pedals, which was a lowly electro harmonics, um, what is it, the LPB1 power booster. Super cheap. You get uh-huh. them for like 30 bucks, and it's just a simple one transistor boost circuit. And I liked it, but it kept breaking. So I fixed it for the last time. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make one of these. How nice. hard can it be? So I ordered the parts, and I made one, and I did it all without a circuit board. So everything's just like oh, point to cool. point on a terminal strip. So it's if it's if if the switch holds out, which is uh-huh. for me is always the weakest part, it'll be, it'll be golden for a long time. And I, while making that pedal, I'm like... Maybe I'll make a couple more pedals. That's I like, cool. I like dirt simple circuits yeah. that you can mount on terminal strips. I don't like dealing with like really complex things. Yeah. I found that a lot of pedals are like amps for me that the less, you know, the simpler they yeah. are, the better they sound. I don't know why that I, is. Yeah. I mean, look at that, that phase shifter there, that PS1A. There's, I mean, there's you just plug a guitar in and there's three giant organ switches. Yeah. just like slow, <laughs> medium, fast. That's all you need, man. And it sounds really good. I'm the same way. Like, I could never get into those Mesa Boogie Mark amps in the 80s. There's just too much going on. It's like, I could, you know, I yeah, yeah I'm the same. Or try to program one of those pedals where right. you have to fucking scroll through Oh, my through gosh, that. yeah. No way. That's I just, maddening. I, you know, yeah. I... Simple is I'll better. I'll do something else with my, yep. my life. I, <laughs> I agree completely. Well, um, yeah, I, I think pedals are awesome. They're fun. They're, they help you get more into your gear and, and hopefully inspire you. And, um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm revisit. It's cool because now I'm revisiting pedals that I haven't played in a while, like this chorus or like that echo, for instance, I hadn't yeah. played that echo for a long time. So it's kind of fun to get back into those things and, and discover, you know, the, the inspiration that they might've provided me back then, you know, cause they did, they were, totally. insp- as I recall, they were inspiring. I mean, I was trying to dial in sounds on the chorus and dial in 
delay settings on the thing and blah 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 and yeah it was cool and inspiring so yeah. cool so you right now um you mentioned you're doing the youtube yeah. thing so how many delays do you have well i've got one delay which is one delay it's the boss dd 550 or something but okay. they've got you can have like mega presets and banks okay and all so that's that one that you yeah. do have to dick around exactly with. yeah uh, and to your point it's it's a pain in the butt because yeah you have to go in there and it's not super user friendly but um but it works. It works for what I need to do. Because I was faking it with that one DD2 for a while, like between songs, kind of like <laughs> monkeying with it. It wasn't wasn't happening, so oh, yeah. I needed I needed just... What, what was his big delay? What did he use? Do you, well, you, you, there's you some digital know, delay. Yeah, but... he started out with, I think, like, uh, I think he was Isn't using... Electroharmonics, like... Yeah, Memory Man. Memory yeah. Man. Yeah, and then I think he. There's the one. There's this one digital delay. I forget what the number is, but that's what is another seminal delay that he used in the '80s when okay. he switched to this digital delay. Um, but he's insane because he'll use multiple delays at okay, once. That's just too much math for me. Yeah, I'd love it's to, insane. I'd love to be able to do what he does just to see, yeah. experience it. Yeah. But I've tried at times. I'm like, you know, I just I don't it's, have a slide rule. Oh my god, it's I can't, <laughs> I can't figure it out. You know, one thing that's interesting, we're talking about the chorus pedal. Uh-huh. And you know how I say it's a hard pedal to, you know, as soon as you hear it, you're like, yeah, no, don't do yeah. that. What yeah. are you doing there? Don't do that. Yeah. I think it, just because it was probably overused in the 80s. Oh, yeah. What I think, and this is just my one man's uh-huh. opinion, uh-huh. is you know what that effect is now today that huh. down the road is people are going to say the same thing? Huh. Is that fucking... Um, modulated delay that you hear. It sounds like an indie movie soundtrack. Oh, yeah. Like that really lush. Every time I hear that, I'm just like, oh, please. <laughs> I love like dirty, like grungy yeah. delays that no, are just like really simple. I agree. But at the same time, I don't like that modulated, ethereal, you no. know, like, and it's a beautiful sound. Yeah. So I don't know why, but I think it's just, it's that thing where it's been done to death. Yeah. You can't watch an indie movie soundtrack where someone doesn't turn that fucking delay on. Right. <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, please. Yeah. So I wonder, it'd be interesting. I, I hope I'm still around. To, I hope to, you are too, Chris. To, you know, I'm going to buy one of those panels then and I'm going <laughs> to see if it has that effect. No, that's a good point, and and that's a good. We might have to talk about that in one of our upcoming things. Is like these signature sounds that are known for a certain time period, and how they've either held up or not, or or w- what we think in terms of held up or not. Right? And one thing that was always interesting too was country music was like just a generation behind, because like. In the 80s, you know, when everybody graduated in rock and pop to the chorus pedal, they found the phase shifter. Right. So all that, you know, all that country music was using phase shifter. And, right. And then um, I think they went to chorus pedal maybe the next year. I don't know. But it was Damn like it. weird. With the, I think there's a there's a documentary in there somewhere. <laughs> search. For, we need to get to the bottom of this. Search for whatever the fuck Chris is talking yes, about. Yes, totally. Yeah. I hear you. Well, that was great. I loved it. I had fun. All right. I, all you know, matters. it wasn't excruciating. I liked it. Okay. Cool. Well, well, as always, thanks for listening out there. We love you guys, gals, people, dogs, cats, mice, whoever. Um, you know, check us out on social media. Like us. Give us good ratings. We're on iTunes. We're on Spotify. We're on Stitcher. We're on all the podcast, neat little podcast places. Um Just thanks for listening. Chris, you got anything? Uh, Just thanks for listening. Yeah. Amen. All right. Go play with your pedals. Do it. Bye. Bye. Bye.